Here we are. We're at Woodlands View Fishery. Droit Witch with Marcus Taylor. Attached to a lovely F1 I assume. There it is. Awesome bit in that in. Show us up. Show us the fish. Ah lovely isn't he? Lovely little fish. Beautiful. Pop him in the net. And could you give me one of your top tips for commercial fisheries such as this? During winter, I like to try and break my match down into like three sections okay. really. The first half an hour of my match, I'm looking to catch like one or two carp if the sun they're feeding. The middle part generally in winter is a little bit tougher, a little bit harder, so I tend to fish into the lake, fishing maggots and pinkies, trying to catch everything really, like some small F1 skimmers, routes, just trying to just keep my match just ticking over, always putting something in my net as much as I can. And then with two hours of the match to go, I'll prime both of my edges, probably down the first shelf, um, just so the carp, when they do come into feed, they're getting ready. They've come in, they've ate a little bit of bite, they've gone out. Then with an hour of the match left, I'll put a little bit more bite into my edges. And then with 45 minutes to go, I'll have a little look there to try and catch them two, three, if you're really, really lucky, four bonus carp that's going to push your match further forward and hopefully turn it into a framer. Another little tip for winter is using the correct pole pot lid. Now when my match starts, I tend to use the sprinkle lid. This is so I can tap in a little little bit of bait, be it maggots or micro pellets, to attract some fish into my peg. But if I feel there's a few more fish in my peg and I want to be a bit more positive, I tend to use the medium pot with the alpine lid. That allows you to put the bait in, turn it over, and it'll all come out into like a nice little clump, a nice little heap there, which will give you a little concentrated area for the fish to feed over. After I finish plumbing up, I like to put a little bit of tipex just at the top of the bristle on my top kit. What this allows is if my rig gets pulled through a snag or something during the day, if my float was to move, I can slide it back down so I know that I'm fishing in exactly the right spot. Also, I like to use a little number 11's trimmer underneath my float silicon. This allows me to dot my float down during the day so if the wind was to pick up a little bit I could bite the trimmer off or if conditions allowed I can put it on or even add another one just so that I can get it dotted right there for catching up really finicky F1s. Right, there's two maybe three up bait options at the moment. First of all, I'm going to talk about maggots. These F1s at the minute seem to prefer to eat maggots, but sometimes you need to use a little bit of micro pellets to entice them into your peg. So what I like to do is feed a pinch of micros into my pot, add a pinch of maggots, and then on top of that there, when you fish two maggot duck bites over the top, it tends to blend in quite nicely. The F1s come in there, as I'm picking them about, they pick out your up bite. The second option is a blown 4mm pellet. So what have you done with that 4mm? What have you done? Have you just pumped it up with a, have you, have you used a pellet pump? Have you? No, last night I put some in a in a food bag. Okay. Just about covered them in water and let all the took all the air out of the bag, similar to the way you do expander pellets. So I prepared them last night, so today I can put them up there, I can put them nicely. It's a different way, isn't it? Yeah, nicely onto a size 16 up. So Generally, these seem to work better when you're fishing for carp in your edge. Okay. So, once your micro pellets are fed, and the fish are coming in there feeding quite confidently, your blue pellet that seems to sit in the middle of them there blends in quite nicely. It doesn't seem so stand out to the carp. No, so, definitely. As, so as they're coming in and they're feeding, they're going to feed confidently and hopefully pick your hook bait up without feeling any type of fear towards that hook bait. So. They want to come in there as they're sucking up your micro pellets. Hopefully, they come in, suck your blue pellet up at the same time, fish on. So, Mark, the day's over. Caught a load of fish, haven't we? Yeah, we have. We've had a, had a lovely day. Probably fished probably for two and a half to three hours, catching probably about 60 pounds. Easily. Yeah, yeah, we've started our day probably at six metres, feeding fishery micro pellets and fishing a blown pellet on the hook. Ah. Yeah, we've probably caught 20 pounds there. Then, as the dives progressed on there, we've decided to ship into the lake there, fishing maggots, probably feeding, what's there, probably a hundred maggots through the pot there. Big on magwas. Yeah, lovely. And uh, most of our boats have come just as the rig's just about to settle. And there have been, been loads of fish, the little ghosty F1s, some of the new F1s that we've caught there, some of the real big old F1s as well. Beautiful, um, they? And we've had some, some of the old proper units as well, which has been, been really nice too. So, yeah, it's been, overall, it's been a, been a really nice day. Awesome day mate. Yeah, thank you very much for them tips anyway. They go down a treat in my book anyway. Now you're more than welcome. <laughs>